Okay, so the next stage will be to open the material editor. So press M to open the material editor. There you go. And you might have it like this or you might have it um, like a little bit more like Maya with the slate editor. Whichever option you like is okay. I'm going to use a compact because it's, it will be easier to see the attributes over here, okay? Um, <clears throat> the first thing I want to do is uh, very much assign that material to all our selections over here. So let's see. Let's go on. Although somebody has... Something selected there. Give me just one moment. Okay, if, um, yeah, it, it was kind of stuck there for a moment. Sometimes the screen capture software um, locks things down for some reason and doesn't let me do some things on the on the, uh, on the viewport. But I get it. Um, you just uh, click on your geometry and assign material to selection. Okay, so with the material selected, um, assign material, this one here with the green uh, little cube. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is on the diffuse for that uh, the material, we're going to map over here on the side a checker material. And it's right here, the checker. And say OK. And you're going to notice right here that it's already set up on the material. Uh, if you want to see it in the viewport, make sure you, you click here, show shaded material in viewport so that it works out, uh, so that you can see how it's working. Uh, as you can see, it is applied. However, we have some work to do with those UVs. And the first thing I want to do is work right here on the material editor window and tiling, let's set it to 10. The idea is that we repeat those uh, checkers, white, white and black checkers over the geometry to see how it, uh, how the placement of the texture will uh, work out like. Um, it's, it's, you know, the smaller the, 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 the squares, the, be the better distribution you have and you will be able to spot distortion like here. You see how these squares are turning into um, rectangles, kind of stretch. That means if I put a texture there, like a photographic texture, uh, it's going to come out stretch, so it's not going to look right. Like a brick wall or wood or something like that that I put there, it's going to look stretch, stretch out. There is some natural stretching that happens on this on the sphere, so the, just do your best to, you know, just pretty much have it, you know, in a decent look. I don't worry about much about spheres, but because it's because mostly I don't use spheres to model. Um, and more, more of a box modeling kind of person. So if you do have some stretching, you can always get um, repeated UVs a little bit more. You know, if you wanted to, let's let's see, 15 by 15, or you know, m m be careful with. Um, I always suggest to keep the tiling the same, but you could create a new material for just a sphere, and kind of you see how you start making one side a little bit more bigger than the other one and you start seeing more squares over the geometry so that is an option that you have um, however you know be careful because then you have the, this problem with the other geometry so you may need to do it on this geometry and this uh, material and apply that material to these two other guys okay so let's actually do it so that you see it at work uh, assign material Assign material, and then this on this material, let's apply the checker map. And remember what we did? We showed material in viewport so that we can see it, and we repeat it 10 times even. That way, you know, it looks a little bit better. The box seems to work perfect. However, the cylinder needs a little bit work. So when we come back, we're going to work a little bit more on the cylinder, and then we'll render the templates.